Guys and gals, in this video, I'm going to show us uh, how to find our document, our SketchUp document that we had made earlier, and then move forward. And we're going to learn how to do some basic shapes uh, in some just more, just I guess, simple navigation into the document or in SketchUp. All right, so um, it should be right here on your recent files if you've been there, I guess, in the last day or so. If you haven't been there in the last day or so, you're going to find it over here underneath your Google Drive and then going through the folders that you had created in your Google Drive. So mine was underneath my classes. Yours would be underneath your 2020, I believe, second quarter, distance learning, and then mine's in second quarter here. And that's where I'm going to find my file. Either way will work getting into it. All right. Now, when we first get into SketchUp, there's a few things to explain. Uh, they always have a person um, in here. And what I just did is I clicked and dragged to the left uh, and whatever I, when I click and drag to the left, whatever I crash into selects. I'm just kind of explaining some basics as we're going through and doing these things. Um, but this person kind of gives perspective uh, how big the scale is. Um, I'm not sure how tall she is. It's Temple Grandin. She's an educational figure. Um, but uh, it just kind of gives a reference about how big or small things you're making. Um, the next thing that we have here is we have our axis. So if we were to look at this straight down, I'm going to go over and do that uh, by clicking on the top view in our scenes. And this usually says top if I hover over it long enough, but mine's not loading right there. So um, I'm looking directly down uh, basically at grid paper. Um, and if I don't want to have this perspective on as far as see this blue line right here, if I go into uh, parallel projection, it will just look like grid paper where I have my X coordinate and my Y coordinate. That other one that was in there um, perspective is our Z coordinate. Now, um, turning that perspective back on, so off, so I always go into parallel projection when we're here. Um, it just makes everything look square. Uh, it doesn't give any perspective as you're looking at it or distortion that happens because of perspective. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to hit the delete key to delete that person. All right. Um, we don't need that to have it around. If you want to build around that just to see the kind of the scale portion of it, that's fine. Um, but I'm getting rid of mine right away. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go into the first shape that we're going to use, and that is called the rectangle. So going in the rectangle tool, I click. And then if I go up here, I'll click again. Um, if I hover over the origin, this is the zero, zero, the intersection there, uh, it gives me a place to select. I'm going to use that at first to click this, and then I'm just going to move to the upper right hand corner. <clears throat> I can do one of two things. I can let go release my mouse here and type in data, or I can just select this by clicking again and putting it down and then typing in data. So I'm just going to go right to my keyboard. I'm not moving my mouse around to enter anything in anywhere. I'm just typing. So I'm going to go on this one 40, all right? in what's millimeters that we're in, comma, 60. Enter. Now, if you notice what happened is I hit enter there and it made the piece and I was lucky enough where I can still see it. Sometimes you won't be able to see it, but I'm going to move my cursor over that place where I made that rectangle and I'm going to find my rectangle there. And I'm not sure if I explained the zooming in, zooming out portion, but that's the scroll wheel on my mouse. If you're still using your trackpad, that's the one thing I do know how to do, and that's a two fingers slide up or slide down, zooms in or zooms out. Um, wherever you have your cursor is where it zooms in and zooms out of. So if you wanted to zoom in on this corner, that's where I'd have my cursor while I was going in and zooming in. Now, um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and make another shape. And this shape is going to be a circle. I'm just going to do this right next to my rectangle, uh, leaving enough space to kind of make the same size. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click and slide out. One of the things I like to do is either slide up the green axis or slide out the red axis. And if you're sliding straight up to the right or, or out, up to the top or bottom, what happens there is it puts the circle points, you don't always think about a circle as having points, in the right spot for us to be able to click on them. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to click just to put it down, and I'm going to type in uh, 25. This is the radius, so when I hit enter here, it is going to make a 50 millimeter circle. All right, now, um, other shapes we can make happen in this also, and that is right down here. Uh, it says the polygon tool. 
if I click into the polygon tool, all right, I can make a, a triangle, whatever it may be. Um, first of all, enter, it says it enter the number of sides. So if I click three here and hit enter, um, it changes my number. If I hit five here and click enter, it changes it into a pentagon. So um, whatever shape I want to make, I'm going to go back to three. Uh, and then when I click and move, uh, you can see how I can kind of rotate or float this around. I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm facing straight up and down. And it's it says the inscribed radius. And you can see the kind of what it's doing there. Uh, it's using the points of the triangle to tell you how far out that is. So if I were to come in and do uh, the same numbers I did before, 25, it should be a very similar as far as where the points end up, I guess, distance across is my circle. So 25, enter. All right. Um, now that we just made some three shapes, you want to make sure that you have your item saved. By clicking save, it saves it. Sometimes it automatically saves it. And that's all I have in this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll be using the push-pull tool to make some forms from these shapes. Thank you for watching.